Namaste, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the webinar series focusing on Selfie for Teachers, the free self-reflection tool for primary and secondary uh, school teachers. Uh, the question here is, how can this tool help you as an e-training teacher? My name is Ef Saltidu and I'm the webinar series coordinator and I'm delighted to be here with all of you today. Thank you for joining us for this exciting and informative session. Uh, before we begin, let's take a, a quick look on the learning objectives of this webinar series as this defines its structure. Um, we will start, start by exploring the Selfie for Teachers tool and its functionalities through a guided demonstration, discovering its features, benefits and future applications. Then you will be invited to use the tool and assess um, your digital competence as a teacher, identifying your strengths and areas for, for improvement by incorporating recommendations generated from the tool into your teaching practice. And at the end, we will be, you will be encouraged to evaluate the potential impact of Selfie for Teachers on your professional development. Uh, you will also reflect on personal experiences and set goals for your professional growth. As you can see, we have a power packed agenda lined up for you, filled with valuable insights and practical knowledge that will help you level up. Uh, but before we uh, dive in, let me take a moment to provide more details on, on how this webinar series work. Uh, this webinar series consists of two webinars and one activity that you can complete in your own time in between the two webinars. Uh, please make sure you make a note in your calendar of all the relevant dates and deadlines if you want to complete the webinar series successfully and receive a certificate. Now, uh, let's go uh, over a few housekeeping details to ensure that you have the best uh, possible experience during this webinar. Um, Make sure you post your questions in the chat as uh, at the end we have a dedicated Q&A moment uh, where we'll address as many of your questions as possible. Um, additionally, throughout this webinar, we'll be using various interactive elements to keep you engaged. So get ready to share your thoughts, learn from each other and make the most out of this session. Uh, now, without further ado, let's jump into our topic and try to empower each other to reach uh, new heights. Um, the speakers of today is Anastasia Ekonomou, who's working as a researcher at the Joint Research Center. Anastasia is leading the Selfie for Teachers tool and did Combe 2. And uh, Nikolos Murataglou, who works as a pedagogical and monitor coordinator at European Schoolnet. And he will talk about the connection between the European School Education Platform and the Selfie for Teachers tool. I would like to welcome Anastasia Economo and thank you for being here with us today. Anastasia, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much, Effie. Thank you for organizing these uh, webinars and uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, we hope that the Set for Teachers uh, tool will contribute to the end of the European School Education Platform and, of course, support uh, all teachers to further develop their digital competence. So uh, let me just take control of the of the screen and uh, navigate to the slides to help us through this presentation. So uh, as as you mentioned already, uh, Thanks for Teachers, it's um, uh, an online uh, tool that aims to uh, support teachers go through a self reflection in order to further develop their uh, digital competence. Uh, we know already that uh, we are in a fast changing and challenging times. So the need uh, for um, uh, complex digital competence and fast development of these competences overwhelmed the whole of uh, the European society, actually, and economy. Um, in, in many cases, um, education systems and teacher professional development systems were unprepared to respond in time and uh, quality uh, in terms of these challenging and, and um, uh, uh, times that we're facing. So um, education and training systems are increasingly, are increasingly uh, developing policies to support digital transition education, acknowledging educators' key role in the digital transformation. So the, teacher, the teaching profession uh, is acknowledged to, to have educators in the center of attention 
because we need educators equipped with even broader and more sophisticated competences to respond to rapidly changing demands. Um, but we need to support teachers skilling, reskilling, and upskilling uh, in order to harness the benefits, but also uh, some challenges that digital technologies um, have uh, for teaching and learning. Uh, so you will see here that um, uh, in the Digital Education Action Plan of the European Commission, uh, digital competence is considered to be a core um, uh, competence, a core skill for all educators and should be embedded in all areas of professional development. So after this uh, introduction, um, we will try to see, first of all, what digital competence is, and we try to see what digital competence is for educators through the conceptual framework uh, of digital competence for educators that is called Digcom Edu. I think it's important to understand this before we understand better what the Service for Teachers tool can um, offer uh, to teachers in order to support professional learning and also uh, digital competence building. And we're going to talk a little bit about what self-reflection is, um, the process that Self for Teachers is using. And then we're going to see a bit more practical how uh, Self for Teachers can be used. And then provide some useful uh, material that may be, uh, that's available for you to, uh, to use. So let's try to see what digital competence, first of all, mean for you. Uh, so we prepared uh, here with Evie uh, and Dudo in order to, to see uh, some reaction from your side. So Effie, you want to explain? Yes, sure. So I'm preparing to share the Slido and I'll share the link. You can go to slido.com and use the code uh, 407757 um, and you can Provide your answer there. One moment. Here. The question is sorry, one moment. Can you say the question? Because I don't see it here now and I'll need to. Can you repeat? Can you remind the question, Anastasia? Yes, the question is what digital competence means uh, for each one of us here in this uh, session. Maybe we can put this on the chat um, as well, the key, or um, so that people can copy. It. Yes. If Nikos can. No, wait. I cannot see the results for a weird reason. I'm trying. Uh, Effie, first you need yes. to click the. Button. Okay, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah we'll... Look, this one is the questions and answers. Uh, I think you need to first click the play button, the green one, to activate the question. Okay, thank you. Yes. Because... So, what does digital competence for educators mean for you? Right, the aspect that you consider as uh, most important. I see people typing already. I see the words innovation, increased professional skills, sharing different aspects of learning, motivational power, educational tools, technology awareness, professional development, different aspects of learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Involved. that's really, it's really interesting to see how <laughs> different uh, aspects uh, from uh, application to development, intellectual motivation, but I see that it's coming up as well, innovation. So 
let's see now what uh, the European Commission uses in order to uh, identify or describe what uh, digital competency is. Uh, so if we go back to the presentation, you will see that uh, we used um, a definition that was uh, used in the, just a minute to take control as well. Uh, okay, I'm taking control <laughs> and I'm going back. So, so you will see here that the uh, digital competence uh, involves uh, three uh, three aspects, knowledge, skills, and attitude. So it's not something simple. It's not only skills. It's not only how to use uh, applications or devices. So in the CALSTI recommendation on key competences for lateral learning uh, that was updated in 2018, we have these three uh, aspects of uh, competence to refer to uh, digital competence as the confidence critical and responsible use of and engagement with digital technologies for learning at work and for, and for participation in society. So you will see here um, aspects of confidence, critically and responsible, uh, critical and responsible use, but also engagement. And not only in, uh, in uh, learning or at work, but also in participation in society. And this of course includes uh, information data literacy, communication and collaboration, media literacy, digital content creation, um, safety, intellectual property, critical thinking, problem solving. So uh, I think that uh, many, many of the um, uh, descriptors that you also uh, gave in the in the Slido uh, could also be embedded in this uh, kind of reference. Uh, so uh, the most important thing for us to uh, to take and when we develop the CFA for teachers is that we should also address, apart from skills, also knowledge and attitudes. And uh, you will see that uh, the first um, approach to understand better what digital competencies is the digital competence for citizens. So at the Joint Research Center, we develop the conceptual framework where we try to analyze the digital competence in relation to target groups. So a, a European citizen should be able to address uh, for the digital competence the, the five areas that you that you see here. So uh, I will not repeat them, but um, for example, you will see that uh, it, it's important that apart from using digital technologies, it's the development of skills, knowledge, and attitudes in the context of digital technologies. So collaboration and communication, for example, in the context of digital technologies or um, uh, problem solving in the context of digital technologies. So uh, having this in mind, uh, we realized, and there was um, a need as well, of uh, coming to uh, understand better what digital competence for educators is. Because educators is a special category of uh, professionals that they don't only use uh, digital technologies uh, in their profession for themselves, but also to facilitate their students' digital competence. So in addition of the uh, framework of the citizens, where, uh, where we expect that all teachers should also have an idea of what it is, we uh, created a new conceptual framework specifically for educators, the Digcom Edu. So in this framework, you will see that one pillar has to do with the educator's professional competencies in their, pro in their professional context. A core pillar where it has to do with pedagogical competences of the educators in the digital context, but also a third pillar that has to do with the learner's uh, competences. So for each one of these pillars, you will see the areas of digital competence. So we see the professional engagement, including organizational communication, 
professional collaboration, reflective practice, and digital continuous professional development. In the pedagogic competences, we have the areas of digital resources, selecting, creating, modifying, and managing, protecting, and sharing. We have teaching and learning, teaching, guidance, collaborative learning, self-regulated learning, assessment, assessment strategies, analyzing evidence, feedback and planning, and empowering learners that this accessibility and inclusion, differentiation and personalization, actively engaging learners. In the third pillar, which is facilitating the learner's digital competence, this is according and aligned to the digital competence for citizens as the students will be the future citizens um, that we're preparing uh, in, the, in the education system. So um, the framework also provides a, a progression model. So it provides six proficiency levels, starting from awareness, exploration, integration, expertise, leadership, and innovation. So a teacher could start from A1 up to C2. We don't expect that all teachers can be innovators or leaders, of course, depending on the area, but also on the interest of the teacher, on the role of the teacher in the school, the, the teacher chooses uh, up to which level uh, in, he or she needs to, to reach. But of course, being able to integrate and digital technologies in a critical approach where it uh, facilitates but also enhances the learning outcomes, it's uh, very important. And you will see that for an example here in teaching and learning, what does it mean an integrator um, in level B1? It means that I meaningfully integrate digital technologies and I can see even further that uh, I can understand what integrating means integrating meaningfully because I understand here that they can organize and manage the integration of digital devices uh, in the teaching and learning process, but I also manage in the, the integration of digital content. So this is the conceptual framework of the digital competence for educators. And it's important to have a conce conceptual framework because it provides a common reference that allows us to build or have as a compass in order to develop, for example, a digital strategy or a tool to support teachers' professional development or even uh, material and courses based on this, um, uh, I, or, or the, or what it means, digital competence uh, of educators. The framework covers all education levels. However, we realize that uh, in order for a teacher to be able to understand the proficiency level that uh, he or she is at, it needs also a, a, some kind of guidance. But let's go to another uh, uh, exercise and see, what do you think, what is the proficiency level that you think you're, you're, you're at at this point of time? So let's uh, try again the, uh, the slide though. I think we have an advanced uh, group of teachers here, uh, Anastasia. Well, it makes kind of sense since most of them, all of them are e winners. So indeed, there is experience here. Mm -hmm. It's obvious. Yes, it is good to see that uh, we have integrators, which means that uh, teachers are starting to use digital technologies uh, in teaching and learning. Uh, and also I see that uh, we have also some um, uh, colleagues that uh, they are even more advanced and are pioneer in, in, in the use of digital technologies eh? and their digital confidence. So uh, let's see that. Let let's understand a little bit more. So just out of the of of our heads, we think based on our experience of what and of what uh, digital competence is, we think that we build, we have this competency level. However, uh, if we will go back to the presentation, we, we see that sometimes it's uh, different to uh, perceive ourselves uh, uh, at a level of competence and different when we go through a guided self-reflection process. What does that mean? That 
uh, we understand better what digital competence is in more detail and in that way we can understand and self-assess our digital competence based on this conceptual framework. So we need to have a scientific um, basis to benchmark our assessment, self-assessment. And it's interesting to say here that uh, your results align with results that we have from teachers that they use already the self-reflection tool, which is about 150,000 uh, teachers already, which um, these teachers uh, perceive themselves to be integrators. And that makes sense because with the COVID, most of the teachers, we had to use digital technologies to offer teaching and learning remotely. However, it's the challenge now to go to the next step, which is the B2, which is critically, critically design uh, learning with the use of digital technologies to enhance um, the learning that is, is taking place. So having the uh, Seven for Teachers self-reflection tool, what we tried to do was to um, use self-reflection as a process that can help teachers to deepen their understanding of what digital competence means, first of all, but also of their own self and, and this way to uh, lead to significant discoveries or insights of what um, this is for each one uh, of us. So uh, according to literature that we uh, went through, we see that uh, having self-reflection, we can trigger the self-assessment of one's uh, competence, one's capacity in order to improve it. And even more, uh, having in mind the critical self-reflection, it's that it's not only enough to understand where we stand, but also to engage in strategies such as setting goals for professional learning and career development in order to even um, uh, further develop. So following these ideas, we took the conceptual framework and we analyzed it in more practical statements that can help teachers to understand their competence levels. So through this self-reflection, uh, teachers can go through the items, the statements with the proficiency levels. I will explain a bit more what this means in order to have a more accurate self-assessment of where they stand and the current point of time that they do their self-reflection. And um, the, the self for teachers, the tool supports the self-reflection process as learning because we learn what digital competence is by going through the, the, the tool, but also it guides the self-reflection on the results of, of the uh, of this, uh, the whole process. And of course, a third level of self-reflection is to take action as we've seen, but also what happened at the end of, of the uh, professional development or the professional learning that we achieved in terms of uh, using it in, in the practice in the classroom. So um, what is the content of Sex for Teachers? What we uh, try to do? So we had the six areas of the Digital Comedy Framework that we mentioned already, and the 22 competences. However, in 2020, when we started developing the study for teachers, we had a lot of changes, a lot of current needs and trends, especially with COVID as well, but not only. So having this in mind, we try to have items, as we call them, that reflect these competences. And for example, you will see here that Online learning environments and data management and ethical considerations was something that was very, very important uh, with the uh, remote uh, teaching and learning using online learning environments. So we, we have an item there specifically for that, even though in the framework it was there, but here is more evident. Or for example, computational thinking or emerging technologies and AI or blended learning. So you would see that uh, finally, the study for teachers are set to items that reflect the six areas of, of the framework. And for the proficiency levels, we try to make it more practical for teachers. So 
we use action verbs that they identify the level of competence. So for example, a newcomer is, I am aware. An explorer, it means that I have tried already. In separator is I use. So not only try, but I, I use. And the expert already can analyze, reflect, and redesign the critical use of these um, technologies. And then we have the leader, which is supporting others, involved students, and the pioneer who is initiating, contributing to the school or community. So we start from the more individual to go to the more collective, but also from the more specific to the more strategic. So this is what we try to do with the uh, progression uh, level in STEFI for teachers. And in order to design it, uh, it was important that we take into account that teachers are adapt learners and also professionals for learning design. So having this in mind, we understood the, the need that we need to have to, to give to the teacher the autonomy, the independence to use the tool at any point of time, whenever the teacher needs uh, to uh, um, understand uh, their digital uh, competence in order to design their own professional learning and, and also to have feedback, immediate feedback in order to understand their own needs. So you will see, for example, that you, you can log in and you have the user dashboard from where you can manage your self-reflections and compare with time and with others. Uh, you can complete the 32 items in one go. It would take you about 20 to 30 minutes or save it and revisit it as many times as, as you need in order to complete it. You get your feedback report with the results, but also tips how to level up. And of course, you can also uh, get a certificate and digital badge for your participation or completion of, of, of your survey collection. So uh, it's important to, to consider and understand that uh, Service for Teachers is not designed to assess or rank teachers' performance. It's not an external uh, tool for evaluation, but it's a tool to support teachers to empower them to reflect on how they use technology. And based on their self-reflection results, they receive their personal feedback report, which is not shared with anybody, it's their own, unless they want to share it, but they, it's, 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 it's very personal and nobody else can see it. And based on these results, they can design their learning pathways towards the development of their digital competence. So to do so, some very important uh, design elements that we use, it's as I explained before, the reflective learning in these three uh, levels. Uh, so first of all, guided self-reflection through the 32 items in order to understand where we stand. Then reflect on the results and design based on the needs, uh, the different uh, pathways. And lastly, reflect on the whole process and see the progress that uh, took place through the whole um, self for teachers experience. The tool also provides opportunities for collaborative learning. So um, you can initiate your own self-reflection at any point of time, but you can also accept an invitation from a group creator. So any teacher can create a group and invite colleagues where they discuss together how they can plan their learning, their professional learning. So we have um, a lot of uh, examples where in a school or in a, in a training institution or in a university, a group of teachers uh, do their own self-reflections and then together they co-design their uh, learning uh, profession, their professional learning path. So design the professional learning path so teachers, based on their own needs, design their own learning. And this is, I think, very important because usually we know for, from different um, uh, research as well, for example, DALIS, that teachers, they do uh, attend uh, training programs, but maybe not at the point of time that they need it and not based uh, on, the, on their own needs. So 
you I will just go a little bit fast here to to mention that you you have your own individual account, so you can save and revisit your self reflection at any point of time. You can have the history of your self reflections. You have the flexibility to to do an area and then go to another area. Uh, but also uh, you can um, have uh the, the the history where you can compare over time but also uh, compared to the all the other teachers uh, of uh, of using the same for teachers um and uh, our idea is that the for teachers can initiate as i said and engage teachers in the whole process of their of the development so in an ideal um uh, scenario is that the for teachers uh, is used to identify needs, to design professional learning, implement professional learning, of course, here with the support of the school, the training institution, or the system, uh, the national, for example, uh, curriculum, implement uh, what is needed, and then take again the exercise and see if there was any progress in this, in this um, uh, whole uh, professional learning development. Um, so, uh, each one of the items is presented here with the six professional uh, learning, um, uh, I'm sorry, the, the competence levels, the, the six statements of the professional, of the, of the competence levels. And it, it corresponds to each one of the six uh, progression uh, proficiency levels. And then for each one of the areas, you can receive your results that also correspond to these um, proficiency levels. So for an, an example, you would see here a statement. You see the action verb that will guide you to understand what proficiency level um, is reflected here. But also you have um, some examples to understand even better what it means. And in case there are terms that are new, we have the, also the glossary that explains uh, what it is. So it's very easy to use, we claim. So you can visit the, you can reach the tool either from the website of the, of the Sensible Teachers uh, portal or directly uh, to um, uh, the platform. You will see the links uh, at the end of the presentation. So you, what you need to do is to create a U, an, an EU login account, which is the uh, commission co uh, single sign-on account. Most of uh, e-trainers, I mean, you, you must have it already to enter the e-training or the ESAP platform. Then you can start a self-reflection or accept an invitation by a colleague or any group that uh, you, wants to, you want to participate in. You respond to the 32 self-reflection items. So you can complete it on one go or in as many sessions as you need. Read your report. So the moment you submit your self-reflection, you get um, a report with the results and suggestions how to level up. And you can download your participation certificate and digital badge. And finally, you can visit again uh, your dashboard and see through time, over time, uh, your progress uh, for your self-reflections that you're taking. And you would see that the, the results that you get, you get an overall understanding of your digital competence uh, about uh, regarding each one of the six areas, but also for each one of the uh, items, or the 32 items. And moreover, you can get specific um, uh, qualitative feedback, for example, in organizational communication, and based on your, on your answer, on your answer, you will get some feedback of what it means and with some suggestions how to level up. And to be able to use the for teachers, uh, we have uh, created some supporting material that is available online in uh, all the EU official languages. Uh, so this includes uh, poster, videos, but also we have a toolkit so uh, you can go step by step there is a guide uh, how to use it for teachers in more details, you, you, which you can download. Uh, and I see my colleagues that they put it in the chat as well in order to go into more detail of what I just presented. And um, all these links, uh, I'm sure that the presentation will be shared with you so you can 
uh, see more of, of what uh, where you can find uh, more information about it. Uh, just to mention that um, we now, uh, you know, test for teachers is for uh, primary secondary education. So now we are in the process of adapting uh, test for teachers, especially for early childhood and care education professionals. But we also have another reflection tool for higher education that is called Chegi, and you can also find it if um, uh, any of you attending they work for a higher education institution. Um, so I would like to close uh, here. Uh, I don't think we have time to share a short video, but I think we have time to see a little bit uh, from your side, hearing about sex for teachers, what would be important for you uh, and what would you expect from for teachers. I don't know if you have already used it, if you have used it, what would be something you expect more, or if you haven't used it, uh, what uh, expectations uh, we've created for you. So yes, obviously it's improved uh, digital confidence, of course. But I see here as well that uh, some new ideas. Uh, I see new didactic digital tools. Uh, I see webinars, courses. And uh, here I should uh, comment that um, the, the tool doesn't provide the resources or the courses or any um, apps. However, it gives some ideas. And I think that the, the, the most important thing with this uh, new uh, school education platform, platform that I'm sure Nicolas will present even more, is to explain how now, based on your self, self for teachers' results, you can find the resources available that uh, the commission tries to gather and collect in one, in one place. So I like very much the, uh, I, the some new ideas, improvement digital competences, guidance and support, self-assessment and improvement, I see that uh, there. So thank you very much, and I hope that we will be able to uh, <laughs> respond to these needs and expectations. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, introduction to the tool. Uh, I think it was a uh, very brief and nice overview that can introduce us to the functionalities of the tool and the idea behind them. Um, I would like to invite participants to share the questions they may have in the chat. So in case you have any question about the tool and for Anastasia specifically, you can feel free to share them and we will be happy to uh, address them. But before we conclude this webinar, we would like to talk about also the European School Education Platform's increasing utilization of the European framework for the digital competence of educators, the DigComp Edu, and its associated self-reflection tool, the one we're discussing so far, Selfie for Teachers. Uh, my colleague Nicolaos Mrataglu coordinates uh, the, embed the embedding of Selfie for Teachers in the European School Education Platform and will provide more details about the, this exciting news. Uh, Nico, the floor is yours, and I'm sharing again the presentation now. Thank you, Efi. Can you hear me properly? Yes, okay. excellent. Great. Give me a moment. You so can start the... maybe by introducing yourself. Until yeah, so uh, as Efi mentioned, I'm Nikolaos uh, Muratoglu and I'm working uh, as a pedagogical and monitoring coordinator in the European School Education Platform and e Twinning. And along with our colleagues and colleagues from uh, the GRC, uh, Anastasia, and also uh, I guess the technical team behind, uh, and also from the European Commission, uh, we initiated. Uh, this work of embedding Selfie for Teachers with uh, the European School Education Platform. And I really like the input in the slide about the courses and webinars because this provides me a nice bridge to actually show you how we, how and why actually, 
we uh, want to integrate those two different um, platforms, so Selfie for Teachers and the European School Education Platform. Yep, so give me one second. Sorry bad, I have to go <laughs> through the beginning. You can go faster, maybe from the grid view. Uh, fine. I, you're you're I, close I did, now. <laughs> I did it, but uh, it wasn't working for some reason. Okay. I don't know why. Okay. No worries. Great. So um, let me provide you a couple of uh, information about uh, the background of this process. So as eTwinners, probably you're aware that uh, in the old eTwinning platform, we had the METP tool, uh, so the monitoring eTwinning practice self-assessment tool. Uh, which we has actually already stopped uh, uh, being available for you, and this will be replaced with Selfie for Teachers. So in the table here, we provide you an overview of uh, the commonalities and differences between those two tools. And as you can see, uh, one really important element is that Selfie for Teachers uh, is available in all the EU languages, whereas the uh, METP was available in six languages. The items and the competencies in the METP were 25 uh, items grouped under three main competencies, pedagogical competence, collaborative and digital competence. Whereas in uh, Selfie for Teachers, we have 32 items for digital competence. And here you can see in the parentheses that we have placed pedagogical because as uh, Anastasia already mentioned, uh, if you remember the um, Bon bon of uh, digital competence and selfie for teachers. Four out of the six competence areas refer to teachers, educators, pedagogical competence. Um, then, regarding the background of those two tools, uh, METP was based on three different uh, international frameworks, whereas selfie for teachers uh, is based on digital competence. As for the process, both tools uh, are being used with the same uh, approach. So we uh, complete the tool in time X, and then we, after a certain period of time, when we have taken action, uh, that means that we might have attended some professional development activities or um, read some resources or, or have applied and experimented with different digital technologies, uh, we can then go back to this uh, tool and complete it once again and see whether we have improved uh, our competencies. And the final aspect refers to the feedback pages. So the METP uh, was providing concrete suggestions based on three proficiency levels, whereas the Selfie for Teachers tools uh, provide six, uh, the actually the results and the feedback page uh, is organized based on the six proficiency levels for each competence uh, of the tool. So, what about the main process that will be available to you? Uh, for the moment, we are still uh, working on uh, the technical aspect. So, this is how you will be able to access Selfie for Teachers uh, through your European School Education Platform account. The first thing is that you would need to uh, access ESEP, the European School Education Platform, and there under the professional development area, you will see one tab indicated as self-assessment tools. And in there, you will see specifically the Selfie for Teachers tool. When you will uh, click on that link, you will be automatically redirected to the Selfie for Teachers dashboard. And here, because of the EU login that Anastasia mentioned uh, earlier, you won't be uh, requested to enter your credentials again. So it's going to be automatically signed in. From this dashboard, you will be able to initiate the self-assessment process upon completing the registration if you haven't registered. And that also includes accepting the tool's privacy policy. Then, 
you would need to uh, complete the self-assessment process in order to get the initial mapping of your competence levels. And at the end, as again, Anastasia showed, you will need to visit the results and the feedback report, which are generated by uh, the Selfie for Teachers tool. However, this uh, report will have two additional features that will facilitate the connection or let's say the integration of uh, Selfie for Teachers with the European School Education Platform. The first one would be uh, the functionality of exporting your reports to ESET, the European School Education Platform, and the second one to access relevant resources in the European School Education Platform. Then, based on your results, you will need to determine which proficiency level you would like to address. So, for instance, let's say uh, that I have completed the self-assessment tool, the self-reflection tool, and um, I got uh, a B1 level in uh, digital resources, the competence area of digital resources. Then I might set my target to improve my competence by acquiring the B2 level. When I set this uh, goal, I would be able to go to the European School Education Platform and uh, search and enroll in professional development activities that have been already tagged as digital resources for B2 level. And to make this a little bit more clear to you, the way that you will be transferred signpost to the European School Education Platform would be through a link that will be placed under each of the competence area in the Selfie for Teachers feedback page. And when you will click on that link or button, you will be uh, redirected to ESEP, where we will already have applied a tailored search page. That means that it will provide you with all the results of uh, the European School Education Platform, which have been tagged as, uh, in my example earlier, as digital resources at B2 level. And these resources might include editorial content, which means all type of articles and news that have been uh, posted in the platform, as well as all the professional development activities like courses and webinars. And now what is the added value of this process? So, the first thing is that we uh, connect the self-assessment tool, the self-reflection tool, with uh, a platform of professional development resources. So in that sense, we want to create this continuum in order to support your competence development. The second thing is that we, uh, from the side of the European School Education Platform, uh, we are aligning all the professional development activities that we offer with the learning outcomes of Selfie for Teachers. That means that you will be able to find relevant professional development activities based on your needs and also acknowledge those learning outcomes in the certificates. And in, the, in cases where some countries uh, recognize officially those certificates, by indicating the learning outcomes in, the, in those certificates of completion, it will facilitate the process and enable you to pursue the uh, official recognition. And the final uh, aspect is that we align all the resources of the European School, Educa School Education Platform with the competencies and the competencies areas of Selfie for Teachers. So you would be able to find let's say categorize the resources based on your needs and interests, needs in terms of the competencies and the proficiency levels, and also <clears throat> based on your interests. So from my side, I don't know if we have any questions. Was it clear? I hope I wasn't speaking fast. Not Nikos, you were great. Many thanks for the presentation. I thought I, th I think it gives a good uh, overview of upcoming plans, uh, hopefully to to be actually implemented in the near future. Um, I'll ask again participants if they have any question. To now is the time to serve them. Um, I have a question though, maybe for Anastasia, uh, not for Nikos. Uh, and I think I'm posing this question actually because probably many teachers actually will have it. Uh, after the meeting, 
So my question is, um, uh, how often should the teacher um, use the tool to evaluate and assess their digital competency using the Selfie for Teacher tools? Do you recommend uh, a specific practice uh, in general? Yes, thank you, Effie. Yes, uh, I mean to to have you know a, a difference or a progress of uh, confidence. It does take time, so uh, we don't expect that uh, our digital competence will change uh, from one day to the other. So, uh, what we we're recommending and suggesting is that usually in the beginning of the year of the school year. Uh, where we start planning our professional development activities, but also planning um, the professional activities within the school or in our uh, working um, context, it's good to understand where we stand with our uh, digital competence. So what we're suggesting to the teachers is to, to do it in the beginning of the year, uh, identify their strengths, not only gaps, eh? <laughs> because the uh, teacher can also what would like to further develop a, a digital competence in an area that they already have a good competence and they're interested in. I mean, for example, creating um, digital resources. And we know a lot of uh, colleagues that uh, they would like to also collab collaborate with um, ed tech companies and be involved into these uh, activities. So they identify the strengths and gaps in the beginning of the year with the support of the school or the trainer or the coach or uh, uh, the, the the leadership of the school, uh, they can plan, uh, first of all, they can design and plan their professional uh, learning activities and then try to implement it. So, for example, they might decide that, you know, uh, we are two, three teachers that we would like to uh, further de develop our competence in um, uh, uh, creating new uh, digital resources. So uh, we've, we've seen from the um, European um, uh, school uh, education platform that there are three nice webinars that we can uh, attend uh, using a uh, Photoshop, let's say, I don't know, or something else. And so the three of them, they, they attend it, they, they collaborate together, they create some resources, maybe they also use it with their students. And then at the end of the year, they can um, uh, do the self-reflection exercise once again. And then they would see if there was a progress in, in, the, in their competence. So what we suggest is that it would be nice to see the beginning and at the end of, of an exercise, what happened to understand a bit better, but not, you know, um, very frequently because we don't expect that uh, digital competence um, changes uh, from one day to the other. And the good thing with the tool is that, as I said, it, because now the, the teachers they have a dashboard, so if I have... Um, let's say six uh, self-reflections in the um, period of five years, I can compare my self-reflections and see my changes, not only for my whole competence, but per area or per item as well. And also position myself with other teachers and, and see what is going uh, with the use of self teachers. Excellent. Yeah, thank you, Anastasia, for, for replying on this. Uh, actually, yeah, it's important to, to find the time. I think that's the most important message of the tool to uh, take the time to reflect uh, on your practices as a teacher, because especially this specific group of teachers, the tweeners, they are doing all amazing things in their classroom. So it's, uh, it's a very useful practice in general to take a step back, reflect and uh, define a new professional uh, development path uh, that can uh, help you level up uh, and improve even the current practices. I think my comment or something here is uh, what sure. I really like into this approach uh, with the platform is that we don't consider professional development only courses, you know? So uh, the activities that are on this platform, they are so rich. So it could be a community of practice. It could be a webinar. It could be a MOOC. It could be an Erasmus Plus project. Uh, so all these activities, are professional development and um, just going through the self-reflection exercise and learning uh, self for teachers about digital competencies it is a professional development activity so i think that um, uh, this um, approach with the with the with the ESEP, the uh, european school education platform bringing all these together 
uh, it, it, I think it will provide to our uh, colleagues here and the trainers <laughs> a, a very rich approach for their professional learning and development. So thank you for, for this effort. Yeah? Absolutely. And uh, actually, we have an, an activity plan for this specific uh, webinar series, and I would like to remind you of that uh, now. Uh, so in half an, in around half an hour, you will have the forum activity available in the platform, in the link where everything is happening, and actually the place where we will share the recording and the PowerPoints uh, until tomorrow. So I would like to uh, invite you to go there uh, after half an hour to start uh, to join this activity, which is actually to use the tool, to use the Selfie for Teacher tool. Uh, very easy registration process, uh, quite easy to complete as well, and uh, no very time consuming. You will see the results, you will receive the results um, based on your answers. You will receive also some recommendations by the tool, and we invite you to reflect on these results and this assessment um, and share your thoughts in a forum activity that we have planned for you in the platform, considering also some specific questions. Um, so I I want to conclude uh, this uh, this first session in time. I think we're perfectly on time. I don't see any uh, further questions in the chat. Uh, so we will renew complete the activity today. Now the activities should not be completed today. You have until Thursday at 12 uh, Central European time to complete the activity. So the next activity that is happening now is the webinar on Wednesday, same time, where we will have uh, one teacher and one school leader who were members of the pilots uh, run, in, uh, run for self for teachers. And uh, they will bring some very valuable insights and experiences as well as they will share with us their own experiences uh, with the tool, with the uh, impact they had in their own practice, at their own school level, at their professional a perspective and uh, we are more than happy to hear uh, this practical perspective as well. Yes, Anastasia. Yes, we do have uh, one minute if more. I would sure. like to mention what you're saying, uh, Effie, that um, right now we're trying to understand more how the tool can be used in, in different contexts. So we um, try to analyze the different use cases of how this for teachers can be used. And we are following this into from case studies. So we have uh, teachers, uh, school leaders, training institutions that they use um, for teachers in these case studies. And we're trying to understand the enablers and barriers, how to even further support teachers and build their professional, um, their digital competence and uh, through their professional learning. So um, uh, exactly, Sean and Irene, we present their own experience from their own perspective of these um, case studies. And um, we hope that uh, we will also be able to share soon some of these uh, results and for you to consider even more how to use it for teachers with more um, uh, to be more effective uh, for you. Thank you. So that's it for today. Join the activity. See you online on Wednesday at four uh, to meet the teachers and the, the the teacher and the school leader and hear the practical perspective of the tool and the benefits. I would like to thank both Anastasia and Nicolas for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we renew our rendezvous our appointment for Wednesday. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a nice evening.